All right, what's up guys and welcome to another episode of Tech Stuff. Today we are looking at the Rhino Arc 2 motion control slider. Now this is an in-depth review and a lot of my personal takes on this I did over the past month and uh, this is just some things I found and uh, just a bit of an introduction for those of you who do not know what this slider can do. The Rhino Arc 2 is a 4-axis motorized motion controlled slider that allows you to control the dolly, the pan, the tilt and the focus of the camera. It allows you to get smooth precise slider shots by programming keyframes and movements for your camera. All this is done by the motion control unit known as the Arc 2. Now this slider can be used to make professional looking b-roll or even some interesting looking time lapses. The Arc 2 is the second version of Rhino's top line of motion controlled sliders. The first version had slide and pan functions, but in this latest model, Rhino has introduced the tilt and a new Rhino focus allowing you to rack focus between different objects in different positions accurately and precisely. However, the focus racking system isn't perfect yet and I'll explain to you my disappointment later on in the video. So how the Arc 2 essentially works is that the Arc 2 itself is the main brain of the entire slider. It is the motion control unit. It controls the pan, the tilt and the focus of the camera. The sliding movement however is controlled by a separate motor which you have to connect via a cable. Now this cable is one of the downsides of using this slider. It's a bit cumbersome and sometimes it gets caught on certain things around the slider so you have to be careful when you're using it. So one of the suggestions that I sent in to Rhino was to create an emergency tension release cable system for the cable. Essentially what that does is that when the cable experiences too much tension, it automatically detaches itself. That will prevent your motors from jamming up and potentially ruining your entire slider. So there are two main ways to control the slider. One is using the joysticks that are provided on the Arc 2 control unit itself. The other one is through their integrated app. Now I must say that positioning the camera using the joysticks can be a bit difficult, especially with the pan and tilt joysticks. Because these joysticks are freely moving around, we cannot strictly stick onto one axis. For example, if I want a strict panning shot and keeping the image level, sometimes you might accidentally move the joystick slightly upwards and you will get a slightly different shot. Now I think this would have been something very easy for Rhino to fix. Um, while you lose that flexibility of moving the joystick in any direction, it gives some control at least to the axis that you want to adjust. Now the same thing goes for the app. Using it on a touchscreen is difficult enough, but not being able to adjust specific axes makes it even more difficult to position your cameras. Alright, so the setup. Now the setup is one of the most important things to know about this slider. Personally, as someone who has used sliders over the years, I would say the Rhino Arc 2 has really improved on its user interface. So I recommend using two tripods to set up the slider to give you the most stability. If you're using the slightly shorter slider, you can go with just one tripod. Now with the Arc 2, the new slider comes with a quick mount system which is these two knobs that allow you to easily attach the slider onto the tripods. So next up is probably one of the coolest features of the Arc 2, the self-mounting mode which allows you to spin the bottom of the Arc 2 into the thread of your tripod. But you still have to tighten that last bit manually to ensure it's secured. So once the Arc 2 is mounted onto the slider, you can go ahead and mount the slider motor which I mentioned before is separate from the Arc 2. Now you can do that by simply attaching it onto the ends of the slider with the two securing screws at the end. You have to use the provided cable to attach the slider motor to the Arc 2 unit. But if you intend to use the trigger cable, you might want to insert that before the slider cable. So by this time the slider is mostly set up, the only thing left to do is to calibrate it. Calibration allows the Arc 2 to understand where it is relative to the distance on the slider. Now when you hit calibrate, the Arc 2 will move to either side of the slider, allowing it to read the maximum length of the track. So like I said earlier, there are two main operating modes on this slider. One is the video mode and one is the time lapse mode. But before that, I should explain that there are two different types of slider motors which Rhino sells. One is the high torque motor and the other is the high speed motor. The high torque motor is essentially a stronger but slower motor that allows you to put the track on an angle and pull the arc to up at an angle. So this is more suited for time-lapse shooters who don't necessarily need the speed of the motor but rather the strength allowing them to be more creative with the angles of their sliders. Now the high-speed motor is the opposite, it is a weaker motor with a faster speed which means you cannot use the slider on much of an angle, rather you would use it flat and leveled instead. Now this motor is more suited if you're shooting regular moving objects or just simple b-roll. 
So in video mode, the operations are very simple. You key in the first and the second position of your arc tool and you hit play. Within that, there are speed settings as well as the option to keep it on loop or to keep it as a single movement. Looping essentially means that the arc tool will move back and forth continuously along the slider until you press stop or until the battery runs out. For the speed setting on the video function, I found it a bit odd that the speeds were set by timing instead of an actual speed reading. Using time as a measurement of speed is a bit tricky when your A and B points vary sometimes depending on what you're trying to shoot. So what that means is that if I set up two different slider shots, I can never get them to move at the same speed. And lastly, one of the most annoying things about this operating mode is that once you've set the first point and moved on to the second point, you're not allowed to start your movement from the second point. Instead, the entire arc 2 will have to slowly move back to the starting point and begin the movement from there. I would like to have the option to start at any which position that I'm closest to so that I don't waste time moving from one side of the track to the other. So for time-lapse mode, setting up the first and second positions are the same as in video mode. However, there are more settings in this menu that allow you to set the shutter speed, the duration of the final video, and the shooting duration. So in time-lapse mode, the trigger cable comes in really handy. It allows the camera to talk to the Arc 2, telling it when to move and when to stop. The slider is actually programmed to move in intervals rather than a continuous sliding movement. What that means is that every time your camera is ready to take a shot, the Arc 2 will actually stop in its track and allow you to get a steady shot, preventing you from getting any blurred images. So setting the final output duration of the time-lapse video allows the Arc 2 to calculate and evenly distribute the amount of shots across the length of the motion. For example, if you set the final duration to come out as a 5 second video, the Arc 2 will calculate backwards at a 24 frames per second video and come out to about 120 photos. Using that number of 120, it will then divide the shots evenly across the length of your desired motion. So there's one other very interesting operating mode that Rhino has developed and that is the face tracking mode. So this feature isn't perfect yet but I see a lot of potential in it. The tracking seems to work fine but only for slow movements. If you move out of frame, the camera goes a bit crazy and it doesn't stop hunting until you press stop. Now this is a very clever feature but it needs a bit more improvements. Now earlier I mentioned my disappointment in the focus racking system and that's because just like the movement of the slider, it is based on key frames and unfortunately the two key frames of the focus racking is tied directly to the movement and the position of the Arc 2 unit. What that basically means is that if you set the first focus point, it will be directly linked to the first position of the Arc 2. Now, you can set the second focus point which will be at the second position of the Arc 2. But within those two movements, nothing is in focus. You only get your first and your second focus at the start and at the end of your movement, which makes it pretty useless to be honest. Now, a lot of people have commented on this and I think Rhino is working on something to separate these two keyframes, having the focus keyframes as its independent set and the movement keyframes as its own independent set of keyframes. I'm saying keyframes a lot. Alright, so let's sum this up into some pros and cons. So let's start out with the cons of this slider. Now, like I said earlier in the video, using the joysticks to move the position of the camera was pretty difficult because you couldn't move specific axes the way you want to. Instead, you might accidentally move the joystick in a certain direction that you did not intend. Now, the second thing I want to say is that this slider being something that needs to be leveled, I think it should have at least included some leveling bubbles on the device itself. Now, this isn't such a big issue and I'm planning to go out and get a few mini ones to put around the slider, but I think this is something that they could have integrated nicely into the slider unit. Alright, thirdly is something that I was pretty annoyed when I bought the time-lapse slider bundle. Now, the time-lapse bundle was advertised to be a ready-to-go time-lapse slider bundle package that allows you to get creative and put your sliders at an angle and have the Arc 2 slide up and down effortlessly using the high-torque motor. But the one thing that Rhino did not include in this time-lapse bundle is a wedge plate which you can see used in their advertisement video. This wedge plate or level plate allows you to keep your Arc 2 leveled while your track is at an inclined angle. Now without this, it was pretty difficult to use it as advertised. I found another way around it which was to use a spare pen head that I had lying around and managed to get the Arc 2 level. I found it a bit weird that this was not included in the time-lapse bundle but uh, Rhino did say that they are including it in their store and it's about to be released. It would be nice however if that was included in the time-lapse slider bundle. 
So one thing I found out about the high torque motor is that when you turn it off and if your slider is at an angle, it loses all its gripping power and your arc 2 will start to slide downwards. What that means is that if you turn off all your motors, you must be ready to catch that if it's at an angle. Now the last con that I'm gonna explain is a bit nitpicky but it's something strange I found about the design of the Arc 2. If you notice the camera isn't exactly in the center of the pan axis which means if you're gonna do a simple orbiting shot around an object, you might not get that perfect arching shot that you expect. Now this wasn't the case for the first Arc 1 where the camera was in the center of the rotation axis. Now that's something to think about and I might find a way to try and get the camera in the center of the rotation axis. Alright, so let's talk about the pros of this slider and honestly, I'm very happy with this purchase. Now firstly, this is a very easy to use and easy to set up system and I think Rhino has really done well in its user interface research to figure out what's best for the camera operators and what's the easiest way to set a slider up. Next is the reliability of this unit. Now what I mean by that is the battery life on this thing lasts forever. Throughout shooting this entire video, all the b-rolls in different locations, learning how to use the system, I've only charged this thing twice and it's still going. Now one of the key things that I haven't mentioned about this Arc 2 is that you don't actually have to use it with the slider. You can actually detach it from the slider and use it on a tripod as a regular pan and tilt head. But this time you have the controls of the joystick giving you a much more smoother shot. So overall, I'm really happy with this slider and I think it's worth the investment. It is a bit on the higher side, but if you want to take video seriously and you want to get that professional shot, I think this is the slider for you. Now, even though I've mentioned a few points to improve on, that's just me being very critical about my reviews. And I hope Renault will take it as a feedback rather than a criticism of their product. Alright guys, so thank you for watching this video. If you have any more questions, you can leave them down in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Alternatively, you can go over to the Rhino Camera Gear YouTube page and see some of their tutorials. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys in the next video.